بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم پروفیسر حسن اینڈ یو آر واچنگ مائی چینل پروفیسر حسن ہمایوں ٹوڈے آئی ول ڈسکس این امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک which is compulsory, which is obligatory in every written test of statistics as well as interview of statistics and that is inference. Before starting today's important and vital lecture, I request everyone subscribe to my channel, like and share my channel and click the bell icon for the notifications of the next videos. Dear students, as we all know that statistics has two meanings one is singular sense second is plural sense in plural sense statistics is aggregates of data statistics of number of students statistics of number of accidents statistics of <coughs> chairs statistics of tables statistics of different household items all these are statistics in the plural sense and in singular sense statistics is our subject it is our subject it is a branch of science in which we collect data we present data we compile data and we draw conclusions we draw inferences about the data and that is actually inference in inference we draw conclusions about the population parameter with the help of the information contained in the sample we take a sample of some values there can be 10 values 20 values 30 values we find out its mean which is x bar we found find out its proportion which is p cap and with the help of x bar we estimate we draw inference about the population parameter which is mu which is mean of the whole population the proportion of the whole population which is p x bar is used as an estimate of mu the population parameter p cap is used an estimate of the population proportion p that is inference the process of drawing conclusions the procedure of drawing inferences about the population parameter with the help of the sample data and inference has two types one is estimation second is testing of hypothesis please keep in mind it's a very important question for every written test of statistics as well as interview in estimation the population parameter is no unknown but in testing of hypothesis the population parameter is known what do we do in estimation we estimate we estimate the population parameter with the help of the sample data it is the process of just estimating the value of the population parameter with the help of the sample data x bar is used and estimate of the population mean mu but in testing of hypothesis there is the population parameter given and we check it with the help of the sample data whether we accept it or reject for example a company owner a factory owner claims that the average lifetime of the of an electric bulb produced by that factory produced by that company prepared by that company is 1600 hours the average is mu is 1600 hours we check it we check his claim with the help of the sample data it is testing of hypothesis in testing of hypothesis the population parameter is given we just check it whether we accept that claim or not with the help of the sample data but in estimation we estimate the unknown population parameter with the help of the sample data it is estimation then estimation has two types one is point estimate second is interval estimate before elaborating these two types I will tell you what is the difference between estimator and estimate. Estimator is the formula which is used to find out the estimate one numerical value for the population parameter. For example, if I say x bar is equal to summation x over n 
इट इज़ द फॉर्मूला एक्स बार इज अ फॉर्मूला विच इज़ एन एस्टीमेटर इट इज एक्चुअली रैंडम इट इज रैंडम एंड एस्टीमेट इज अ सिंगल न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम द सैंपल फॉर चेकिंग फॉर एस्टीमेटिंग द अन नॉन पॉपुलेशन पैरामीटर एस्टीमेट इज नॉन रैंडम Please keep in mind, estimator is the formula. It is a function of the random variable. That is random and estimate is a numerical value, a fixed specific value. It is non-random. And now I will tell you what are the two categories of estimation. There are two categories of estimation. One is point estimate. Second is interval estimate. point estimate when we calculate a single value from the sample information for estimating the population parameter that is point estimate for example if i say babar azam has played 101 day international matches and i took the sample of 10 matches and find out his average betting score and that is 42 for example x bar is 42 that is a single value on the behalf of that single value i estimate the population parameter his average of all 100 matches that is x bar that is point estimate and if we have a range of the values and it is interval estimate we have a range of the values if i have the range from 40 to 50 average and we assume we estimate and we say that our population parameter will lie between that given interval that is the interval estimate whenever we have a single value calculated from the sample for estimating the population parameter that is point estimate that is 50 that is 60 that is 70 that is 100 that is 150 and whenever we have a range of the values from the sample values and we say that our population parameter will lie in that given interval which we have estimated which we have prepared which we have calculated from the sample information that is called interval estimate then i have told you random and non random a very important question for multiple choice questions of the papers random means estimator is random it is the function of the random variable and estimate is a numerical value a single value it is non random then point and interval estimate then criteria criteria for the good point estimator up point estimator will be good will be will be the best one when it has unbiasedness it has consistency it has efficiency it has sufficiency then x bar which we calculated from the sample values for estimating the population parameter mu that is unbiased what is unbiasedness if the expected value of the sample statistic is equal to the population parameter then we say that the we have unbiased estimator for example if i say expectation of x bar is equal to mu it is sample statistic its expectation is equal to the population parameter i will say it unbiased expectation of p cap pop sample proportion is equal to population proportion it is also unbiased expectation of median is equal to its parameter it will also be unbiased what did we learn unbiasedness is the criteria for the good point estimator if the expected value if the expectation of the sample statistic is equal to the population parameter then that sample statistic will be unbiased and x bar median and p cap are the unbiased estimators of the population parameter a very important one then s square it is the biased estimator of sigma square why because expectation of s square is not equal to sigma square expectation of s square is equal to n minus 1 over n sigma square and a very important concept about small s square and capital s square actually small s square is equal to n over n minus 1 s square it is the relationship between these two and if i take expectation of s square that will be n over n minus 1 constant will be outside expectation of s square equal to n over n minus 1 and that is given we have it is equal to this much 
n minus 1 over n into sigma square these will be cancelled and expectation of small s square will be equal to sigma square what did we learn capital s square is not an unbiased estimator of sigma square it is biased estimator of sigma square because its expectation is not equal to the population variance sigma square and what is the relationship between small s square and capital s square small s square is equal to n over n minus 1 into capital s square and if i take the expectation of small s square that will be equal to population variance small s square is unbiased its expectation is equal to sigma square then what is consistency a very important concept it is also the criteria for the good point estimator an estimator is said to be consistent if it becomes closer and closer to the population parameter when we increase the sample size if i increase the sample size it approaches to infinity the variance of theta cap becomes zero the variation between the sample statistic and the population parameter becomes zero when they come closer and closer by increasing the sample size we say that it is consistent estimator please keep in mind for checking the consistency we take the help of the variance because variance shows the variation when there is no variation between the sample statistic the value calculated from the sample and the value of the population parameter when there is no variation variation is zero between them we can say that our estimator is consistent it is very close to the population parameter for example if i say in in the betting every in the cricket matches there is a player his his name is mohammed rizwan his average is 42 and he's is he he played five matches series his his score is 42 41 43 44 all values are close to the population parameter we will say that he is a consistent batsman if there is another player his average is 42 and he has played five matches he scored 42 41 0 10 and 50 and he is not a consistent player because there is a much variation between the values the values are scattered around the central value the variation is much between the values from the central value he will not be called the consistent player because the variation is much what did you learn in consistency when the sample statistic comes closer and closer to the population parameter when the variation is very close to the zero by increasing the sample size we can say that our estimator is consistent and then x bar is the consistent estimator we take the variance of x bar sigma square over n and if i apply the limit n approaches to infinity something over infinity that will be equal to zero p cap is equal to x over n if I apply the variation uh, infinity and approach infinity variance of pk will also be equal to zero it means x bar and p cap are unbiased as well as consistent estimators of the population parameters mu and p a very important concept then dear students boys and girls what is efficiency if we have two unbiased estimators that is the condition the two estimators must be unbiased if there are two estimators t1 and t2 for efficiency which is the most efficient one we will have to calculate variances if i calculate the variance of t1 and i calculate the variance of t2 if the variance of t1 is less than variance of t2 the variation for the estimated t1 is less than the variation of the estimated t2 then we can draw conclusion we can draw inference we can say that it signifies that it shows that t1 whose variance is less than variance of t2 is more efficient than t2 a very important one then x bar and median there are two unbiased estimators of mu and mu what will you do variance of x bar is equal to sigma square over n variance of median is equal to pi by 2 sigma square over n if i check the efficiency what will i do variance of x median over variance of x bar that will be pi by 2 sigma square over n divided by sigma square over n these will be cancelled pi by 2 will be the answer and 1.57 
it is greater than 1 it means that mean is more efficient than median and a very important concept I want to share it with you people if the answer is greater than 1 then please keep in mind it means that the denominator the estimator which is in the denominator that will be more efficient but if I have two estimators both are unbiased variance of t1 over variance of t2 it is less than 1 then t1 will be the more efficient estimator when the answer is greater than 1 then the denominator t2 will be the more efficient one and if its answer is less than 1 then the numerator the estimator which is which is existing in the numerator it is t1 it will be more efficient and now i will tell you what is 1.57 it is the question of the interview what what is 1.57 it shows that first of all we concluded by by finding the efficiency variance of median over variance of mean if we cancel the value sigma square over n over sigma square over n then pi by 2 is the answer 1.57 it shows that mean is more efficient than the median now it shows it signifies that if i take the sample of 100 and find out the mean it will do the same work for it for for the population parameter if i take the sample of the median for the median for 157 values that these will be equal if i take the sample of 100 for mean that will be equal to the sample of 157 for the median that's why the sample for 100 is more efficient for the mean a very important concept now i will tell you the last important thing if we have two biased estimators If we have two biased estimators and we want to check the efficiency we will find out mean square error and what is mean square error that is always equal to variance of theta cap plus bias whole square what did we learn if we want to check the efficiency we will find out the, the variances for the two unbiased estimators and whenever the two estimators are biased then the expectation of the estimator is not equal to the population parameter they are biased then we want to check the comparison we want to do the comparison who is the best one who is more efficient we will have to compare their mean square errors and what is the formula of mean square error that is equal to variance of theta cap plus bias whole square you should comment on today's lecture i will wait for it assalamu alaikum